Chase, what's up, brother? What's happening? How are you guys? All right, Chase. So I don't think we've actually, I know we've never had a show and had a guest um, on the same day as the race is going to happen. Obviously, you're coming off a huge win at Darlington, an emotional win at Darlington for you and your family. Like, h- how has your week been, man, over the power? Not, not, hadn't even been a week. How's, uh, how's it been since Darlington? And, and what have you done to get ready for tonight, man? Yeah, obviously, Darlington was a, a huge thing personally, you know, for me and my family. You know, things have definitely been a little bit better. It doesn't take anything away by any means, but um, it's made it a little bit easier. It's just been, you know, honestly incredible the amount of people that, um, the story has reached, you know, if we can just help one couple going through the same thing, you know, I think that's, that's our goal. And it's amazing how many people are going through what we've gone through. So I mean, I, I've been doing this too damn long, Chase, to be honest with you. I looked up when you were born, you were born after I graduated <laughs> high school. So that kind of pisses me off. Um, but, but man, emotionally at 25 years old, I was in the sport and I was on the competition side. Um, I never had to go to work on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday to race carrying the emotions that you are carrying as a 40 year old. Yes, man. My mom broke her hip uh, the morning of a race. I had to go to the racetrack. I had to carry the burden of knowing she was going to have surgery. Like emotionally at 25 years old, how hard was it for you to buckle in that race car and focus on what you had to do? Yeah. You know, it wasn't hard to necessarily get in the car. Um, it was hard to go to Darlington though and sit there waiting it out when I knew my wife was at home hurting. Um, and there's just nothing you can do. You feel hopeless. And, you know, getting in the car wasn't ever a question. I, I was kind of curious where my head was going to be. Um, and to be honest with you, it was way worse than I expected it to be. Um, you know, beginning part of the race, you know, I was nervous starting the race and just because we hadn't been doing it for so long. And then kind of the first, I would say, you know, three eighths of the race, I kind of felt back to normal. But then when I got to the lead with 50, 60 to go, that's when kind of emotionally I just fell apart. You know, I, I said in one of my interviews with 50 to go and I was leading with Al Geyer, I uh, running second. I was tearing up. You know, I was not thinking about anything in the race car. I was thinking about my wife at home. I knew she was watching and knew what she was going through. And then obviously when we had that last restart, I took the lead with, you know, eight or nine to go. I knew as long as I didn't screw up more than likely, I was probably going to win the race. And then emotionally, yeah, it just got worse and worse and worse. But um, definitely was a weird feeling in the race car. I'm curious how tonight will go. Um, just because obviously it's still fresh. It's not even been a week yet. So uh, I'm glad that we at least got one race under our belt to kind of help that. But yeah, definitely emotionally was was not there emotionally or mentally. I was just kind of all over the place. So um, definitely was a weird feeling in the race car. And like you were saying, it's it's tough to go to the racetrack and you know deal with those kinds of things. But not everybody knows how I am with my faith, and that certainly helped. Chase, how much better did it make it outrunning Kyle Busch on a damn you know the end of the race there? Probably what I'll give it this, Brett, one of the best to ever do it in the Xfinity series. And here you are with all this going on in your world and, and you get a chance to just rip the top and outrun Kyle Busch on the last lap. Yeah. You know, it's just crazy how this whole thing's worked. You know, I think the story wouldn't be as significant if I didn't beat Kyle, you know, if I would have won, it still would have been a big deal, but it wouldn't have meant as much. It wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have been different if Kyle wasn't the guy that I outran and, you know, it was kind of funny when that restart happened and I look in my mirror and I see Kyle running second. You know, normally I would have been a little intimidated probably, but I just had a, a piece about the whole thing just because I, I knew God was going to somehow work it. And, uh, you know, I just had a feeling I was going to win. I knew he was going to probably get there. I knew he was going to be close, but, you know, I just had a piece about it. You know, I, I just felt like there was a reason. I, I didn't think God would let me run second, as weird as that sounds. I just knew that there was going to be a story turn out of it. And uh, obviously that's what happened, but you know, Kyle is by far one of the best in, in anything he gets in a go-kart, a truck, Xfinity car, cup car, anything he gets in, he's good. So to beat him at any level um, is certainly a big deal, I think, for my career. And hopefully we can beat him again tonight. That's that's obviously the goal. To throttle back up in turn one where you did and to see Kyle coming up, I, I don't know what you were seeing at that point, but I was about to close my eyes watching on TV. <laughs> Um, you know, you drove back on the outside of Kyle. Kyle's coming up. I know you can see him. He hits you a little bit, and you guys both just pretty much stay in it and race off the corner. And, and um, man, I can't think of a better way to win a race at a track like that. Um, and as far as competitors, too, you put a lot of pressure on yourself at the beginning of the year saying you needed to win a lot of races if you were going to get a shot at the next level. And um, that's one way to that's one way to do it, man. I mean, you, if you beat Kyle, you open eyes. 
Kyle's probably, you know, he's obviously one of the best to drive in the Xfinity Series. Um, so to beat a guy like that at a track like that, I think uh, that has to be um, that has to be awesome, man. I mean, um, did, you know, uh, it's cool to it's cool that you thought like when when you saw him back there, you know, you still had that confidence to do it. Um, I think that's a I think that's a pretty good trait to have. Yeah, I mean, definitely beating Kyle anywhere is cool, but to do it at Darlington, I mean, just from a personal standpoint, I mean that confidence wise, I feel like it goes a really long way. Um, but yeah, the, the Darlington deal, you know, running the outside, it's, per- it's just like Days of Thunder. I knew it would stick. If I could make it happen. Um, but yeah, you know, Kyle. I hit- you know what Days of Thunder is at 25? I'm proud of you. Casey doesn't even, doesn't even know I, uh, what that is. But yeah, I what hit the wall off of four. I was so loose. And I don't know if he got just enough air in my left ear or what, but then I obviously smacked the wall off of four. And I tried to – I was kind of trying to side draft him, but my, my more goal was – was to run him way down into one because I knew if I could still sweep out and get that angle, I would be good. And, and Kyle raced me pretty clean. I mean, he could easily just ran it all the way to the wall. I think we both would have wrecked at the end of it. But, you know, it was just crazy how that all worked. I was telling my wife, you know, normally when you hit the wall, it just sucks you right into the wall and you can't get out of it where I literally hit the wall and gained speed. Like, so just everything went perfect. Um, you know, it took me back to dirt racing because he was kind of trying to give me a slide job and I knew if I could just stay in it, I could clear him probably. Um, but yeah, it was an awesome race to go back and watch. And, you know, I didn't realize it was, he was as close to clearing me as he was, you know, inside the race car. I felt like I was still at his door and then watching the race back, you know, he was all but clear of me. So it was definitely a, a really good race. And I was surprised that he wasn't able to side draft me off of four. I, I was lucky enough to get a good enough run off of four to, or he couldn't side draft me because then it would have been like the Ricky Craven finish all over. If he clears you into one, that's going to be tough. Oh, yeah. The race is over if he clears me into one. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I don't know. About a year or two ago, I actually hired Chase as my agent for my next contract negotiation. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know, Chase, I'm in a contract year. Chase went on. I think he got some bad information. And went on Reddit and 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 said we made about eight hundred nine hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> so um, now I'm just I've hired Chase. So I'm chasing up to contract year. I'll send you Philippe's number. I forgot about guys. this. Oh, the Reddit. Yeah, Chase puts out there the spotters make like half a million dollars a year. 